Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing yet another one of my 360 book reviews, this time talking about the book What Are You Looking At? 150 Years of Modern Eye in the Blink of an Eye by Will Gompertz. So the title of this book does kind of give it away quite a lot, this is a expansive look at 150 years of modern art going from 1860 with the pre-Raphaelite era all the way up to modern day. Will Gompertz is um, the current BBC arts editor, he's also written about art for The Guardian and The Times has worked with the Tate and generally is a fairly prolific human being when it comes to the art world as an art critic rather than as an artist. He does have a couple of other much smaller books that were kind of playing around with art as a concept but this is his first big sort of expansive look at the art world and art history. Um, it was published in... Apologies, I should know this. Published in 2016, so it is obviously now three years slightly out of date, but when you're spanning 150 years of art, it's okay if you miss off a couple at the end. Um, so this book I think is absolutely fantastic. It is really, really perfect for anybody who has either not really got much of an idea about what, what modern art really is or has a bit of a clue and wants a bit more information. I think if you've studied modern art in any real depth or detail you'll find this book potentially a bit too vague but is a very helpful book for just that kind of expanse and timeline of how the different movements interact with each other but if you're completely fresh and new to the topic this is definitely where I would recommend that you start. You know if you struggle to tell apart your Matisse from your Mondrian or your Holman Hunts from your Damien Hirst this is going to really help you to narrow down those variety of different isms and working out where things fit in the grand scheme of art you know as we know it today so the content is super helpful it covers the ism that we're talking about and then particularly the time frame so it actually starts with um the fountain which i think is is Okay, no, so the, yes, ignore that. Um, so we get pre-impressionism, which is kind of roughly where we start, and then we go all the way up to uh, postmodernism, and then art as we consider it now. It's got a bunch of different dates in it to give you kind of an idea, and it's also got where conflicting isms, which were happening around the same time, almost as like a reaction to each other when they were happening, and their kind of cultural significance and cultural relevance. So it's really interesting to see how these variety of different like art movements come as a reaction to something that's happening in cultural society you know nothing is created in a vacuum and artists whatever their medium be whether it be mainly painting and sculpture in this book as we're understanding kind of fine arts rather than like obviously writing and music and plays and all of that jazz and that whole separate world of creating but nothing is ever created fully in a vacuum and this book is really good at exploring the reasons why these movements have gone the direction that they have and kind of reactions to things that are happening in the politics of the time you know there's a whole bunch of stuff about various movements that formed as a reaction to things like the first and the second world war which is really interesting to see kind of art mimicking life and life mimicking art and that idea that it's a two-way reflection there. It's also really interesting to see how the various different artists influence and inform each other and how things that we take kind of for granted now have been so revolutionary and so um, kind of radical in their time. For example the Pre-Raphaelites if you were to see them in uh, a gallery to nowadays you probably wouldn't consider them to be particularly modern art they are relatively um, standard as far as paintings go but they were absolutely revolutionary at the time for the way that they were dealing with subject matter and light and working with real people and just so many things that were very much taboo at the time and they really made waves in the art world when they were first there and that's why um, Gompers goes all the way back to them as like the starting point of the discussion. Now some tips for how to read this book because when you're dealing with art which is very much a visual medium obviously it would be really helpful to have some pictures in here. Now there are a few as you can see here but there are you know probably no more than 20 and this book lists off over five ten different paintings per page it's not looking at very particular pieces of art it's discussing huge sweeping big macro looks at various movements so when it talks about how kandinsky uses blue for example you are going to need to see quite a few examples of that and you can't possibly fit that all into a book like this it would need its own like coffee table book to go with it so i would heavily heavily recommend that you have your phone out and you have google images up so that you can see what on earth this author is talking about because some of these you know i, I consider myself somebody who is semi up on the art world i've been to a decent number of galleries i know a variety of famous 
famous paintings you know I'm, I wasn't a total rookie going in but there were just so many of them that I couldn't place without actually googling it and I think that would be is like really necessary even though it does break up your reading slightly it helps you get so much more from this book also this book is like information overload okay you are gonna like really need to focus potentially read it several times to be able to get all of it i i cannot talk meaningfully about the art movements that are in it particularly because whilst it's helped to place various things you know it's just so dense in information that it would take me so many goes around to fully feel like i can really talk about it but it is an excellent way to start off in the modern art world and it's really good for finding out like where you want to focus more attention on. Off the back of this book I've gone and bought books about the pre-Raphaelites, about um, specific things to do with surrealism and various people like Degas and it's something which has been really helpful to kind of focus in where I personally want to know more about so it's it's really helpful as that broad sweeping understanding of the art world. Um, I gave it five stars, I absolutely love it, I don't know if you can tell that <laughs> um, so I would really recommend it so that is it from me uh i really need to get off camera or else this is going to be over six minutes long but basically have a wonderful reading week and i will chat to you soon bye